Welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up and use the tape buddy. So first things first, you're going to want to make sure that your drywall is prepped properly. Personally, I think it's super important to prep all of your seams. So you want to make sure that you actually have mud in your joints. So if it's way too tight, sometimes I'll even 45 the joint a little bit and then I'll pre-fill all of that full so that when the time comes to taping, I know that those joints are full of mud. Next, you might be wondering what kind of mud to use. So if you're in the US, I would recommend a heavyweight all-purpose mud. So like USG Green Lid. If you can't find that, the next thing I would say is go to a lightweight all-purpose. If you're in Canada, a lightweight taping mud is a great choice because in most places we don't have heavyweight all-purpose. Okay, the next thing that's super important is getting your mud thinned down enough because it's really hard to pull the tape out of this tool if you have the mud too thick. And almost all muds come way too thick to use without mixing them. So if you don't have a mixing paddle, you can pick up one of these mixits along with the tape buddy. They do a good job and they attach nicely to a regular cordless drill. So you're gonna to wanna to get all the bubbles out and add a little bit of water to it. Okay, so that's fairly thin, it's running off the knife and should be thin enough to lay the tape with. Think of something like yogurt. Because this is plastic, it's not gonna scrape the sides of your bucket and put little shreds of plastic in there. Next, you're gonna to wanna to clip this out of here. And you're gonna to need to clip those flush, like that. Next, we're gonna slide this in here. I like to use the more mud side. The other side says less mud. So it's gonna slide in like this with the writing on the bottom. And then you just slide it in until it clicks into place like so. So that little tab right there, if you wanna remove it, just push down on that tab, pull it out. Next, when placing the tape in, it's super important that you get this going the right way. So it needs to go like this. So this is the side of the tape that you want the mud to cover and that's the side with the crease so that it can bend like this. It's super easy to get the tape into the tape buddy, but what you might wanna do is take the tape and sort of fold it the other way because it has to go in like this. So you're gonna to wanna to place it in there. And then if you do it that way, you'll see that it just pops out right there and you can really easily get that in there like that. Once it's through there, pull it through. And again, feed it through right here. And there it is. So there's a sweet spot in terms of the size of a roll. I find that a 250 foot roll is just right. If you do only have a 500 foot roll, you might wanna put something like this in here and that just holds it up. So a two inch piece of ABS can work. I'm using a vacuum wand here, but that just holds it up so that it can slide more freely through here instead of getting bound by the friction of the tape. So once you got your tape through, you might notice that it's got these handy little notches right here that help it sit on a bucket. So that helps when you're pulling it to hold it in place. So I'm just gonna fill this guy up. So if you look closely when pulling the tape out, you'll notice that it leaves more mud in the center which is great for helping fill the joints. And there's still just enough on the edges to not get edge blisters. All right, now that we got this set up in full, it's really easy to use. So you can just tear the tape off like that with your six inch or four inch knife, whichever one you choose to use. And it's just as simple as pulling the tape to length. Now I recommend making sure you pull down because if you pull up, it's gonna scrape the mud off of it. So let's estimate that length there, right about there. Tear that off. I got a little extra here. I'm gonna cut that off, put it on this joint. Nope, too short. Don't need that piece. Okay, but then just wipe the mud out. It's super easy. Let's 
Get another one done here. Again, pull down like so. Go like that. Extra tape, take it off, put it in a bucket or in my case on the floor. So if you keep this close enough, you can actually just add the mud right back to here. Now when it comes to corners, you can still use this tool. It works pretty well. So just line it up in the corner. And then what you're going to notice is the tape's going to want to crease right in the middle on that line. So just use your knife to pressure it into the line right in the right spot. And then wipe out one side at a time. You're going to want to make sure that you have a nice worn in knife. And then do the second side. It's also perfectly acceptable to overlap small tapes where necessary. Don't do it on butt joints, but on a factory joint or on an angle, it's not going to be a big deal because there's going to be enough mud to cover it after. a good estimate. I will admit that this is actually going to be a lot easier for a lot of you guys than some of the methods I've shown you already. And also, if I was using the less mud, because I could have, because I pre-filled all this, if I was using the less mud, this would wipe out faster and easier. And of course, it's always handy to have a bucket of water to wash your hands in when using any taping tools. For tool cleanup, I'm just gonna empty this into here, get as much of it out as I can. And now I'm going to put it in here. I'm actually going to leave that overnight. And then tomorrow I'll probably spray it out with a garden hose. All right, you guys. So I'm going to be honest with you about something. This is the second time that I've used this tool because the first time I was too smart and too lazy to read the instructions. And I actually had a bit of a hard time. The main reason was because I tried to use a 500 foot roll with no piece of PVC to help support it and make it spin easier. But I can tell you from experience that having used this and actually followed the instructions this time, I think this is one of the most dummy proof ways to tape that I've ever tried. So if you're interested in picking up one of these, you can check out the links in the description below. And I just want to say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope your project's going well.